friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are in Chapter 7 and continuing with the previous topic that is 7.1 Verifying Automated Test Environment Components and this is the part 2 of that. So in continuation with the previous tutorial, the next parameter of the component we are talking with respect to automating uh, the test environment's consideration is intrusiveness of the automated test tools. When you talk about intrusiveness, is what kind of interaction does the tool or the automation solution have with the SUT? The tasks generally have a very tightly coupled uh, with the SUT. When generally talking about the environment, we recommend it has the minimal uh, variation between the SUT and the uh, task environment which actually use for the installation. So when it comes to execution of the automation test tools to test an SUT, it would require to be installed as much as possible on the same environment or the same configuration where the SUT is installed. This is basically to have a very tightly coupled system which you just have a quick direct interaction with the components on the SUT. So probably this may have a lot of benefits to avoid any kind of uh, compatibility issues, any kind of com configuration issues and result in very effective and faster responses. So sometimes it can also result in the negative effects of the com highly coupled systems. That means having uh, the SUT and the test tool on the same system. So what are those negative impacts is what we're going to look into more detail. So this may include uh, SUT behaves differently when the task resides within the SUT environment. Sometimes uh, the system under test may not be 100% uh, compatible with the task itself. The SUT has different behavior than it was used manually. Sometimes when you're doing automation or when you're trying to identify the object, there are different behaviors. When you're trying to identify the object, it did identify the objects on the application. But when you try to execute the same, probably the uh, function was unable to be identified by the tool. Also, like SUT performance is affected. Sometimes it is, might you know reduce the time or uh, may involve more time when compared to the manual execution. So, in general, when you talk about the intrusiveness difference uh, from the different approaches, uh, we have different approaches which can give you a different example to understand that how it can vary when talking about different interfaces or interactions or different intrusiveness uh, for the automated test approach. So here are three things what we are talking in broadly way is like when interfacing with the SUT from an external interface, probably from a, uh, a di you know flash drive or USB mods or connected through a particular external device and you're trying to run a test on the SUT environment. Uh, generally when you're talking about the embedded systems where the uh, system is altogether a hardware and combination of software so and maybe you're passing the code from an external source um, it might have a different behavior altogether and have a different impact on the system when you're talking interfacing the SUT on the GUI level we general testing uh, the SUT environment is adapted in order to inject UI commands and to extract information needed by the test cases but the behavior of the SUT is not directly changed but the timing is affected, which can result in an impact on the behavior as well. Because behavior is just not limited to the functionalities. We do consider a lot of non-functional parameters at the same point of time, which begins right from that core level. Interfacing with the SUT can be done via test interfaces, just generally like talking about the CLI, command line interface, or APIs, and that would have gained different aspect of it. So the availability of these interfaces is an important part of the test design for the testability. The level of intrusion can be quite high in this case. So this would be like minimizing the effort because these kind of interfaces do not make use of the user interface or UI. So it does not have to wait for the page to load or object to be appearing. We can directly get into the web services level or API interactions and we can get the outputs at any point of time. In continuation further, we have one more component to discuss from this particular segment, that is framework component testing. Where framework, obviously we understand there are several automation frameworks which we can create as a part of automation testing. And it's really very, very helpful. So we need to understand that the automated framework components need to be 
individually tested and verified because it's very important if you're calling a library function, you're having a global component or maybe the business parameters being used, they all have to be verified when working with creation of the environment for that. This may include functional and non-functional parameters as well. For example, components that provide object verifications on GUI system need to be tested for a wide range of object classes in order to establish that object verification functions correctly. Likewise, error logs and reports should produce accurate information regarding the status of the automation and SUT behavior as well. Further example of non-functional testing may include understanding framework's performance degradations. As you run the test probably after a certain point of time within the automation framework, it might slow down for some of the parameters. Utilization of the system resource that may indicate problems such as memory leaks or you know, CPU utilization and several other things which can be further drilled down in more detail. Interoperability of the components within and or outside of the frameworks are also one of the concerns to be taken care. So framework is just not mere about preparing the framework and executing them. We need to make sure that every component works fine and make sure that the functional as well as, all, as, well as the non-functional parameters are also well validated. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.